Uh, this is Chuck Marshall with Metal Wani, and I'm talking to Billy Sheehan from Mr. Big, the Winery Dogs in Nice. And how are you doing, Billy? Uh, I'm doing real good. Thanks very much. Awesome. So Mr. Big is set to spark up the summer with the release of Defying Gravity on July 7th. And uh, you guys reunited with Kevin Nelson to produce the new album. Was it his idea to compress the, the recording schedule down to six days and record the band live? No, uh, it was the only time we had where we all could carve a spot out of our schedules. So we had no choice. <clears throat> we, didn't, we had to either not do it or do it in six days. So <laughs> we, could, we, could, we could do it. I've done records in, in less time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's kind of nice to uh, have that urgency. And I think it it reflects on some of the character of the music that's on here because we we, we had to we had to move it along quickly, and uh, I do know that's just kind of human nature. If, they, if you if you're given three months to make a record, <clears throat> you'll probably uh, yeah, right right at the end of three months it'll <laughs> almost be done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? and, and if you're given, if given a, a huge chunk of money, you'll spend it all. Right. So you know it's good to kind of uh, you know make it make a. a, a like a time barrier that you have to get it done within and it forces you to dig deep and uh, think fast and uh, come up with ideas quickly because the songs weren't uh, completed when we went in by any means uh -huh. so we uh, and it was it was nice to do things on the fly like that i, I like that uh it's, it's a positive kind of pressure cool so um i love the title track define gravity it's it's an uplifting song that suggest that release from mortal bonds into something greater something more the this album has this like vitality and spark of lean into it how do you feel that this album compares to that classic album well uh i hope favorably because i love that record yeah. <laughs> uh, lean into it right and uh, it was a big life changer for all of us in the band um uh, in, in very very many uh, ways uh, so i think Many of the elements are the same now, the same producer and all of us were all 20 some years um, along from that record. Um, so we uh, have lived a lot of life. <laughs> we, 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 uh, and that experience kind of shows up in writing and your performances and what you do. So um, hopefully it, it compares uh, favorably. I think there are some elements of it that are similar. Uh -huh. I don't think there's any songs that sound like any other songs. Yeah, no, no, not um, at all. Um, yeah. But uh, but there's there's a similar vibe to it. I mean, it has uh, uh, some some rocking fast heavy things, and it's got a couple of really nice, uh, 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 beautiful uh, songs of a sweet uh, message, and uh, it, it it could very well be a, a parallel to it. Cool. So, uh, damn, I'm in love captures that skip in your step when you're in love. Um, in, in a world with turmoil that we have today, it's, I think it's refreshing that we hear a love song that doesn't sound cheesy. Um, what went into the writing of that song? That was written by a young lady named uh, Jennifer Lynn Simpson, and she is uh, that's kind of an interesting story that uh, I did a music seminar years ago, and she was one of the attendees, and I spoke with her quite a bit then and urged her to uh, the, the theme of my seminar was be awesome. <laughs> if you're going to do anything, be, be awesome at it. Be as good as you can be, you know. Right. And all that. And she took that to heart. And I, I was in touch with her for, for years afterwards. And she's a, a, a friend of myself and my wife's also. Uh -huh. And um, uh, so uh, so she moved along in her career and she did really well. And uh, so I, I, I hope uh, that uh, the seed that I planted would eventually grow and, and it did and she came up with a, just a wonderful song that yes, when I beautiful. heard it I just thought oh this is, this is, a, this is perfect uh, I would just love to hear Mr. Big doing this song I'd love to hear Eric singing it and uh, so we, uh, we had to do a little bit of arranging because her voice is a different range than uh, Eric's of course but uh -huh. Paul managed to do it very cleverly uh, do a quick guitar retuning to make it because normally it's with open strings and it's very jangly when you you strum it uh in the key we needed to move it to it wouldn't have been jackly but paul figured out a way to do it so he uh it was uh, uh similar to just take my heart in which he tunes uh one of the strings in an odd way uh for uh that song on uh, 
lean into it. This one also uh, it required <laughs> one string to be tuned in that way to make it work, and uh, it worked work very well. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with the song. I think Eric did just a spectacular job singing it, and uh, and I'm I'm glad for uh, for Jennifer. She got a she got a song on the Mr. Big record. Yeah, it's it's a great, it's a fantastic song. Um, so this is the band's ninth studio album. The song 1992 seems to take a nostalgic look back at the career of Mr. Big. Um, you guys are still making fantastic rock music. What do you attribute to the band's longevity and the wellspring of creativity that you guys have? Well, I think we got the, the right four people from the beginning uh, and a good combination of personalities uh -huh. that, uh, that just seems to work together creatively. Paul has a... Uh, uh, a, a quirky sense of songwriting with a sense of humor, uh -huh. and uh, I think that's a great element to have in the band. Also, he's a, not only a blazing, amazing guitar player as far as the, the, the wildest, difficult playing, but he's also very, very tuned into songwriting and playing what the song needs and strumming an open G chord if that's what you need. Uh -huh. You know, he's, he's, he's never built on, I must do one thing or I must do that other thing. He's very open to move around. Eric's voice is just uh, uh, as, as good as it gets, in my humble opinion. Yeah. And uh, as a songwriter, he's a spectacular. Uh, Pat has been a huge contributor to everything we've done, uh, songwriting, recording, production, sound, live performance, everything in his drumming and his finesse were uh, uh, spectacular. Uh, I'm in the mix there somewhere too. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, unfortunately now with Pat, uh, uh, with the situation he has, uh, with his uh, illness, yeah. he can't do the full kit hard heavy playing uh -huh. he does get up and do a couple songs with us but but he's on stage with us at all time and uh, we leave no man left behind that's we, great we're we're very happy uh, and he was very very involved in the, everything that happened in the studio and our our drummer who's doing the heavy lifting matt uh he pat would run out of the control room into the drum thing and discuss just about on every take like some other thing to do or some way to treat it or some way to look at it and Matt, uh, such a wonderful guy to take direction like that so well, yeah. and with such a great attitude, and they're and they're very good friends now too. So it's it's uh, we we um, unfortunately the situation uh, the original four we had to add somebody to help out, but uh, we're really pleased with with what Matt does and how he contributes as well. So, but it's all good. We so I think uh, the longevity it comes from. Uh, the, it was just the right combination, and and uh, when I put the band together, uh, it wasn't completely by design. There was some chance to it, but I knew Pat, and I knew if I was going to do a band, I wanted to get Pat in the band, and I knew uh -huh. Paul, and I said, if I'm going to do a band, I want to get Paul in the band. Yeah. And we were looking for a singer, and I found Eric and said, man, this guy is a singer. Yeah. So. Uh, at, at whatever whatever day it was on, on my astrological sign, it was a lucky day for me because I I picked the three right guys and it's lasted this long and it's been an incredible adventure. That's fantastic. Um, I love the vocal harmonies and the slippery blues runs and be kind. And then you, oh, Paul, I love it too. Yeah, and you. Then at the end, you, Paul, and Pat just take off and jam, and I, it's just a fantastic song. Um, can you tell me just how much damn fun that was to write and record? Uh, a lot. I love that <laughs> song. At first, at first, I heard its rough uh, workings and uh, instantly fell in love with it. I just love the uh, the changes are straight up blues, but they're not yeah. they're not common blues. It's not a common way of blues. It's more it's deeper yeah. than that, which is really interesting. And Paul's solo on it, I think, is just spectacular too. He sticks to the blues. Yeah. And the, the way you play the blues is blazing, but it's the blues on there. It's really, really cool that he did that. And uh, we, we uh, doing those background uh, harmonies really uh, was the icing on the cake for me on that song because it just really makes it, it just makes it a sing-along thing. And it's a great message. Uh, yes. Like you mentioned uh, the turmoil in our world before. Uh, I, I second that because there is a lot of turmoil. But what a great little message! Just be kind to someone you don't know what they've been through. You know, it's how right. great. Yeah. So I'm I'm really really uh, pleased with that song, and I'm so glad it's on the record. Awesome. So uh, the Winery Dogs are on a break after a busy few years with the new album, the World Tour. Um, has the band planned anything for the future, or are you guys on hiatus for the moment? 
new uh, DVD comes out August 4th that we shot in Santiago, Chile. Oh, awesome. Uh, so we're excited. I just posted about that on Facebook. Cool. And then when uh, we're done with Mr. Big, uh, uh, I imagine we'll be starting to write for uh, the new Winery Dogs record, cool. which I'm very excited about. I really love playing with the Winery Dogs live and uh, love performing with Mike and Richie. So um, we're, we're, Richie's off doing his thing, Mike's doing his thing, I'm doing mine, and we're going to get back together uh, as soon as uh, everyone has their time and, and to throw another uh, log on that fire and, uh, and make it happen again. So we're, we're, we're excited about it. Cool. Um, so um, the Winery Dogs seem to evolve from like a super group into a full-time band. Did you guys expect to get so much love from the music fans worldwide? Uh, no. I, I, it was an incredibly pleasant surprise. Uh, launching a new band is tough. It's tougher than ever, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when we got the kind of support and response that we got, we were we were so pleased and uh, overwhelmed uh, in such a good way. And uh, all over the world too, we went every place we went. It was just crazy from Korea to Santiago to uh, Buenos Aires to Japan and all over Europe and in the USA. So we're uh, we're uh, supremely thankful and grateful uh, that, that it went down this way. And we're excited about doing another record and getting out and hitting it. Uh, I, I, I live to play live, so yeah. I'm lucky that I'm in I'm in several bands. So I right. <laughs> always have the option of playing. And Mr. Big, I love Mr. Big. That's the number one in my heart, of course. But, yeah. but uh, you know, we really can't play as much as we'd like. So the situation with Pat mm -hmm. and, um, and everyone has their own things too with Mr. Big. Right. Uh, so uh, we're playing as much as we can. But if I if I only had that, I'd have to figure out what to do with the rest of the year. And uh, <laughs> uh, thank, thankfully, the winery dogs are there to, to provide uh, a really, really uh, welcome uh, situation on stage for me where I can perform. I, I, I grew up playing in clubs and we played every single night. So yeah. for me to, to not play uh, on the <laughs> evening, it's, I, I feel kind of out of place. So I'm, I'm really lucky to have two bands that are that, that people enjoy and that I certainly love too. Awesome. So um, recently, you know, the world lost a phenomenal talent in the death of Chris Cornell. Um, can you share the, the impact that his death had on you? Did you ever meet him or work with him? Uh, no, I didn't, but I know of him and I know people close to him. And uh, it was, um, I was quite angry about it because I do believe, uh, and this is just one man's opinion, mm -hmm. based on, on, on what I've seen uh, in, in media, so I believe his wife uh, bringing this up, that, that the um, pharmaceutical uh, situation in the, in the world is so dreadful and so many people are dying because they mistakenly take two or they forget they took one and they take another one yep. or they forget to take it and they go into withdrawals and uh, when you see a warning on a, on a, on a, a pharmaceutical that says uh, as a side effect ideations of murder and suicide yeah, I, I, I would think twice before I, I just can't believe that stuff is on the market, and, there, and there's got to be a better way. I'm not sure what the better way is, but well, we got a, an amazing world with a lot of intelligent people and incredible science. There's got to be a better way than these particular substances, which are just so dangerous. You accidentally uh, forget and have a drink on top of it, right. and you could die. I mean, and more people die now from pharmaceutical drugs taken according to the directions yeah. prescribed lawfully and legally than traffic accidents. That, yeah, it's incredible. An amazing statistic. Yeah. So I feel, I feel for his family and friends and fans. Uh, it's just a, it's a terrible, unnecessary loss. And I hope uh, the only good that can come out of it is people stepping back and saying, we got to do something about this. Yeah. Do you do you think that at all that the the music industry or fans um, may turn a blind eye to some artists that suffer from depression, or do you think it's a reflection of our society as a whole with, with respect to mental illness? I no, I, I believe that uh, from my experience with fans that I deal with and that I'm lucky to have, they they are very very uh, concerned and caring. Uh, the situation happened with Pat. We were just inundated with. Uh, uh, sympathy and wonderful thoughts and words of encouragement from people all over the world. So, uh, yeah, 
and as far as depression goes, uh, you know, I think it's been medicalized, which I think is, uh, in my humble opinion, I believe that's an error. I don't believe it's a medical situation. I believe it's a life thing. Mm-hmm. It's not, there's, there's, there, there's no test, no biological test or no scientific test that can uh, determine any imbalance of, of chemicals in your brain. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Which sounds amazing, but it's true. Yeah. There's no, it, it's, it exists only in theory and was voted on by a committee. So it's not actual science. Uh, it, uh, so I, 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 I think the world needs to, that's why be kind, and not to, not to uh, an odd way to segue to that, but yeah. I think that's why that song means so much to me because I think it really is an important thing for people to start to understand about each other and communicate yeah. with each other and understand that uh, things are tough sometimes. And so, so be be kind and um i, I certainly uh, wouldn't stop anyone or or wouldn't have a, a, any negativity towards anyone who decided to go the route of pharmaceuticals uh i support them 100 percent. but I, I would again i would just hope that they would look at something different a 13 year old girl who you know gets her uh, her first period and begins to have secondary uh, sexual characteristics and has a stepfather and three stepbrothers that pick on her, and she's depressed. It's not chemicals in her brain. Right. It, it, it's 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 the people around her yeah. that are picking on her and causing trouble. You know. So uh, it's as simple as that. But I, for my experience with fans is is uh, has been extremely great, and I, I, I we have some of the finest people you could imagine coming out to our shows and writing to us and communicating with us. And I answer a lot of uh, communications on Facebook and by email. Oh. I, I spend a lot of time uh, responding and I'm happy to do so. So I think, uh, I don't believe they're actually turning a blind eye to depression. Uh, from my observation, they're very concerned with uh, any any problem that anyone has uh, in music. Music is a little different than movies and television, mm-hmm. I believe. Uh, there's, a, there's a closer relationship with, between musicians and fans than than uh, in other uh, uh, lively arts. Yeah, and I think it's great that you are so connected to the fans, you know, because that's um, that's what we, we as fans live for. <laughs> well, they they really are everything to me, and I'm not saying that as PR. I mean, everything I own, every my car, my house, my retirement account, everything I have comes from somebody buying a ticket, a t-shirt, or a CD. So uh, uh, I I see some people occasionally forget that, but I don't. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's great, Billy. Um, So over your career, you've played with some outstanding musicians and a lot of great bands, you know, the Mr. Big, Winery Dogs, David Lee Roth, Talis, Niacin. Um, Is there a facet, just one facet of your career that you've enjoyed the most? Well, uh, I'm lucky to say there's a, it, that, that I have a choice of of times that I could choose as being <laughs> some of the best. Extremely lucky. Uh, the David Lee Roth thing, of course, was just a, a, a fell out of the heavens, and there I was. Yeah. Uh, I got the call from Dave. That's pretty amazing. And the Talos in the early days, I didn't really realize I've been playing in clubs, even though it was a grind, and I was hoping for more and hoping for better. I learned so much doing that uh-huh. that I use to this day. So in retrospect, that was extremely valuable. I don't think much of what I have now or what I do now would be nearly the same if I didn't spend those years and years and years playing copy tunes at bars. It really had a huge positive effect on songwriting, playing, performance, everything you could imagine. Uh, having a number one single with Mr. Big, that was a real life changer. <laughs> uh, we, we, uh, I, uh, I often do music seminars and, and bass clinics and things of that nature, and I, yeah. I often say to the to the attendees, uh, if you ever have a chance to have a hit record, do it because <laughs> it's, it's an amazing ride. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, an incredible thing, and uh, so I, I that's probably the top right there. But the, but the other things were just just fantastic, and nothing. I don't think anything would have happened without everything else happening. So it kind of all worked together. Cool. So, Billy, I, I am a huge fan, and it's such an honor to talk with you. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you very much for calling. Thanks a lot, Billy. Great, man. All right, talk again. All right, see ya.